Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Wasserbauer, and I just received a fun email from a patient that I would like to share, because this is a question that kind of comes up a lot. There's a lot of confusion about what finasteride does to your hormone levels. Well, finasteride doesn't directly affect your hormones, but let me tell you what the question was. Uh, I did have a question, Dr. Wasserbauer. My doctor told me that taking Propecia will render testosterone therapy useless. Is that your opinion as well? Well, unfortunately, that's a major misunderstanding because this, the little hormone that actually affects hair has testosterone in the name. So even though it's dihydrotestosterone, and that is not testosterone itself, it's a little chip off of the big hormone, testosterone, people mistake it that way all the time. Let me explain with sharing my screen here since we are on a Zoom. I'm gonna whiteboard this. So here's exactly what happens. So if I were to show you the, the hair follicle here, this is the top. Right around the center, there's all these little tiny stem cells. Okay, I've probably drawn this on a previous uh, uh, video. And right through here, is a uh, the bottom of the hair follicle with the, the blood supply and everything down here. These stem cells are what's different from hair to hair. So if you have a hair that's in the back of your head, it does not have a DH, oh, well, here's DHT receptor, okay? But if it's on the top of your head, it does. And if the dihydrotestosterone gets to the DHT receptor, it tells the hair, hey, don't grow this nice thick hair. Grow thin and wimpy. <laughs> and that's what the hair does, okay? So what you want is to block this guy. Now, uh, I'm going to undo that last one. So where does dihydrotestosterone come from? Well, dihydrotestosterone comes from big testosterone, okay? Big T. And testosterone, if the way that Propecia works is there's a little enzyme here, 5-alpha reductase, okay? And what Propecia or Dutasteride does is Propecia and Dutasteride go up to that hormone. I don't know if you can see me here. They go up to that hormone and they say, I, this, is, this is the dihydrotestosterone, here's Propecia, goes up to that hormone and it forms an irreversible complex. And that's how the whole thing gets flushed from your system is the body looks at this complex and says, well, we can't use this. So then it just kind of metabolizes it, flushes it out of your system, okay? So then it's not there to make the hair go small, okay? So what happens is, now back to my little drawing here, what happens is testosterone actually goes up because you're not using it to make dihydrotestosterone, you get it? So if you're not using the testosterone, you have more the, to make dihydrotestosterone, dihydrotestosterone, you end up having a little bit more of that around, so your testosterone actually goes up. Now, in the case of somebody who's actually taking testosterone therapy, right? If you're taking testosterone therapy, what you're gonna find is that your testosterone is naturally high. So in the case of, of you know, trying to save your hair, the testosterone therapy is going to increase your testosterone. And when your testosterone gets increased, this is going to go up and naturally, if you're not taking anything to block the 5-alpha reductase, it's gonna naturally make lots more of this, which is gonna make your hair fall out, okay? So it's not that testosterone is inactivated by taking finasteride or dutasteride. These things are commonly known as Propecia or Proscar or uh, Avidart, okay? But what happens is it actually protects the hair follicle from the downstream creation of the hormone that's gonna make your hair fall out. So if you are taking testosterone therapy, you actually need to be on a 5-alpha reductase blocker because what it's gonna do is the amount of testosterone that you have, which is gonna be way higher now, is gonna, you're gonna stop this reaction from happening. And you don't actually need that much. For those patients who are a little bit more concerned about uh, whether there might be a side effect or they just don't want to take a daily pill, there are alternative dosing regimens that you can use. You can actually take it five milligrams once a week. That also works. So to answer your question, and for my patient out there, 
definitely be on a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor if you are taking testosterone therapy because it is exactly the opposite of true <laughs> that it inactivates the testosterone. It actually helps it and may actually boost your testosterone just a little bit. I hope that really helps.